rough, it's bad. And uh, a woman that I've really found fascinating, and she's from uh, a state that's a great state, and a city that's uh, been hit very hard, really, very, very hard, uh, Detroit. Highly respected. She's a political person. She doesn't happen to be a Republican. And that's okay. When things aren't going good and you get a little help from a Republican, we'll take that, too. But your story was just a, fa just a fantastic story. And uh, we're going to go around the room, each of you. This man was an NFL football player for 10 years, a friend of Tom Brady. And he was hit hard. Yes, and you didn't, you weren't so strong when you got hit by that. That little. No, I didn't feel strong at all at that point. Yeah, you, yeah. you were not. Uh, you were saying you were not. Uh, you didn't feel too powerful. So if we could, we'll go around the room, and if we could start with you, Representative, and congratulations. It's an incredible story. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. It's such an honor to be here, and it's such an honor to be here amongst all of you survivors. Um, I just can't say how wonderful it is to see your face and thank you for everything that you have done. I thank did you. not know that saying thank you had a, pol uh, a political um, line. I didn't know that. I right. thought just saying thank you meant thank you. And I do. I sincerely appreciate that because had you not brought this to the forefront of the, the HQ of being able to put this out here, I wouldn't be here today to even have this conversation with you and to be able to talk about the needs of Detroit and talk about the people who really need this. And they need help, and right. you're here to address that. And I sincerely appreciate that from the both of you, from the bottom of my heart, from the people of my city. Well, you were so incredible as a representative, both in terms of how you got better and what you went through. And your husband sounds like a great gentleman. He went down there and he took care of things, right? He yes, took care he of things. That means he loves you, because some husbands would say, ah, let's not bother. <laughs> yeah, he, will do, he, will, he will do whatever he has to do, right? Yes, he did. So that's fair. And that was late in the evening you did that, late right? In the evening. And we had the drugstore stocked with the, uh, with the medicine, and that's fantastic. Why don't, you, why don't you say, what got you to go late in the night to the drugstore? Uh, what got me to go late at night? We, we were trying to do everything we could. She's real sick, so we kind of, kind of in a panic, and uh, she's making, she's making phone calls. And once we got the doctor to put in the script, Doctor Arsawala. Oh, I see. That's when we I went get it around. The doctor did a good job. Doctor Arsawala is amazing. He is um, a world-renowned doctor in the state of Michigan, and if was it was a doctor from a hospital or a local doctor, or he's he's a doctor, local doctor, but he is right. in charge of the AMA in Michigan, and he has uh, nine uh, uh, urgent care clinics, and he has been on Fox That's with me as well. But Dr. Arsawala is amazing, That's and he has taken care of my family as well. And we, I've lost several family members to COVID, no all, in one, all in one household. My cousin Cheryl Fowler was, a, was in um, ICU. She lost her husband. He was turned away from numerous hospitals, as was she, um, over four times. And within six hours, she lost her father-in-law, who was turned away numerous times. Her whole family had to be tested, which are seven family members. Right. And those seven, out of those seven family members, she's had three of those test positive, and that is her children that have How tested positive. How are they doing? How are they doing? Thanks to Dr. Arsawala and what you have done, they're doing great. But it can't be just. So they took the hydroxy then. They, yes, they did. But it can't be just based on my name yeah, right. and your name. Right, right. It needs to be something that's readily available to everyone right. in the city of Detroit. Well, I hear that the uh, governor has gone all out for it, uh, from being totally opposed to it. Now she's all out for it. So that's what I'm hearing. So that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. It's a great thing. So you might have said uh, when you started that walk or run, what the hell do I have to lose, right? You know, my yeah. expression. What yeah. do I have to lose? I thought about that. She was in bad yeah. shape. Yeah. And uh, I understand. Congratulations. It's Thank an incredible you. story. Thank you. And I like Democrats. I especially like this Democrat, though, for just the reason you have a beautiful, uh, you have a beautiful presence you. and you're a beautiful couple. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Really thank you for good. having us. I have a feeling she's going to go very much up. She's a good representative right now, but I have a feeling politically, do you have any further political ambitions, do you think? I actually um, did not even aspire to be a state representative, to be perfectly honest. So. Yeah. I don't know. I may have to cross party lines. <laughs> I may have to work with her and cross party lines. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great sir. honor to have you. Thank you. Thank it's you. My honor. Both. Please. 
tell us your story. My story is we were on the Diamond Princess, so ground zero. And, and uh, I didn't get the virus there, although I tested positive there, didn't learn about it till later. We were flown back, thanks to you, we were flown back by the State Department to uh, first... Was one. Nobody would take the Diamond Princess. Yeah. No other country would take it. Nobody yeah. wanted it. It was like, it was, you know, they call it a ghost ship. Not yeah. good. So we took it. We were stuck there. It was like we were on a, pet a floating Petri dish. Yeah. We were watching the bodies get off daily, off into uh, ambulances, taken out one by one. A total of 750 of us over time were taken out. We, we were more than double the amount of outbreaks if you added everyone in the world at the time other than China, and China wasn't giving us any information. If you added all that up, we doubled the amount of people who had the virus. How many people died ultimately on the ship? The ship was 11 people have died from, from the Diamond Princess. And, and so we, on the plane ride back on the 747 military plane, I woke up with a high fever, over 103. They put me in a quarantine area next to uh, about eight other people. We landed in Sacramento at Travis Air Force Base. And then they saw me and saw I had a condition, a precondition of Guillain-Barre syndrome, 67 years well, old. Well, you did have a precondition. I had a precondition. So they flew me, they, they had three of us in quarantine and then my wife and two others who, never, who didn't have the virus, and my wife never got the virus. She should be the one studied right now. I was flown so to- you were together? No six foot thing, no nothing. You were together and you didn't catch it. Well, they just started taking yesterday. Providence Health and Services on the West Coast just started to do a study. They're studying you. Both, well, they're both using us. We don't need you. We need you. They do. We're hoping yeah. to create a vaccination. Yeah. 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 Do you think maybe you had it before and there's an immunity without knowing it? I think so, but we'll find out. Yeah. So you didn't see it at all. Wow, that's fantastic. I don't think she had it. So, you don't so they, call that a stroll. Oh, right? believe me, I know that. No, it's amazing to be together like that and yeah. to not catch it. Not only that, we had two friends, so we were going back and forth in each of our cabins. They got exposed, they got the virus. We were stuck How on it. They did, How did, they do? they did great. They came out great. We were stuck on a bus for six and a half hours with people with the virus on the plane. People had the virus. She sat next to a husband of a couple who got married on the Diamond Princess. They were in their 40s. And uh, the wife was next to me in the, bio, in the, in the uh, special quarantined area on the plane. The husband was next to her coughing away when we did ended you, up at- Did you feel comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Did I you, put a blanket over my head. Did you, did you cover your head or something? I, I put a blanket over my head because we were so cold. And the smell from the toilets, the two portable toilets on the wow. plane was so bad. Mm. And that was on a, a, on a plane? That was on the cargo plane that you guys had sent for. And then you had the bus. Well, the bus was first, so that yeah. was a very long process getting off so the bus. So that was no pleasure either. No. That was, these people had it. Yes. Yeah. A lot of these people. Right. It's amazing. And if they did like our friend from St. George, he did not have it on the um, boat, but tested four days later at Fort Travis. So he then, either got it on the plane or on the bus. Do you think it brought you two, you two, do you think it brought you together closer? Or, or yeah. Absolutely. You could, I Absolutely. could see it, you know? Absolutely. It brings you together. I, does that Absolutely. make any sense? We were separated for in, in five Omaha. weeks. Yeah, five weeks, because I was in the biocontainment area in Omaha, and then to a lower, level of and you were very sick at one point, right? Just, just the first day on the plane, mm -hmm. I had the 103 fever. By the time I got to Omaha, I was okay. I still had symptoms. I still had a cough that stayed with me for about two and a half weeks. I had shortness of breath for about four or five days. How bad was that shortness of breath? Was it, it, was it noticeable? It was no, not noticeable when I was lying in bed, but if I got up and walked around the room, if I walked around the room and talked on the phone at the same time, trying to multitask, that was impossible to do. Really? Yeah. How about you? You had shortness of breath too, I read, right? Yes. So how bad was the, the shortness? The, the, shortenings of, the shortening of breath is what really got me afraid because I do yeah. have Lyme disease, and thank you for always mentioning about yeah. Lyme disease. Yeah. No, Lyme um, disease is a big deal. The thank you for always bringing that to the forefront. Do you think you still have Lyme disease? I do. I have chronic Lyme disease because I was never treated in time. Uh, 
Can that be, can you get rid of it? I'm hoping that we Lyme can talk about that. Lyme disease is a thing that people don't talk about. It is a brutal. It is and brutal. if you have a certain type of blood, you have no chance. It's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. And then on top of having COVID-19 with it is a nightmare. But the right. breathing is what scared me the most. And it came, it, I went from zero to 100. It was from getting tested that day on March 31st to trying to do a few things around the house to just all of a sudden my breathing became labored. So you actually had a hard time breathing? Oh yeah, I, I was afraid, I was afraid for my life. And until anyone has been in that person's shoes, until you have walked that walk and sitting there knowing that the hospitals near you are full, the very two hospitals that are near you, that you have right. access to, right. that you cannot get into. Do you think in retrospect you were better staying home? I was better. You know, because those hospitals, are, they can be crowded. And I, and I didn't know what my status was. So mm -hmm. can you imagine, you don't know what your status is, mm -hmm. and if you could get into a hospital, and in the way I was filling up with fluid, my lungs, my breathing being labored, I felt if I didn't get that medication, it was either the medication or die. So you thought you were going to die? I honestly felt I was going to die. And like I tell people, I'm telling my story. I'm telling my truth. I'm not telling anyone else's story. I'm not telling anyone else what to do. I'm telling my story and my truth. And this is how I feel. And these are my words. Well, I'm not going to speak for her, but I don't see her voting for Sleepy Joe by <laughs> I'm not going to ask her that question. But if she votes for Sleepy Joe, I'd be surprised, OK? Anyway, incredible story. Thank Such you. a great story. Thank you. But your wife, uh, I think we're gonna yeah, we're gonna keep your wife around, right? We'll keep her around. Yeah. And she is what's, unbelievable. <laughs> what's in the veins, she right? Is exactly. unbelievable. That's fantastic. Great, great stories. Thank you both very sure. much. Please, go ahead. Yeah. So I mean, I consider myself a relatively healthy individual probably get sick once every couple of years right. um, you know and to think that I had something like this was very um, kind of surprising uh, and I think that to think that you have a virus after being such a healthy individual you kind of you know where you caught it so I travel a lot and I had a f the flu a little bit um, and so I think my immune system was compromised while I was traveling and it could have been just kind of community transfer um, so it's been a just accepting that I had it I think was the very hardest part um, but then to, for something like that to take me down for almost eight days of fever and then three days of How shortness of breath. Mm. I've never felt this bad in my most recent <coughs> recollection. Um, I think that... So the, compared, you said you've had the flu uh, a number of times. How did you compare this to the flu? Never felt these symptoms before for this long. Um, so a, a bigger, better, much worse uh, event for you? Yep. And I only took Tylenol the entire time. I took a lot of it. Um, I think the most frustrating part, honestly, was trying to get a test. I think that going to numerous places and being turned away by a sign on the door that says, don't come in here if you have these symptoms. I think that and was a little bit. When was it? This was early in March. So I think part of the challenge was there was a lot of people saying a lot of different things and kind of knowing what to believe, where to go. You kind of go in circles a lot. You when did you find out officially that you had it? Um, I think on March. Uh, this is probably about seven, seven or eight days into my fever, I found out. So I got the test eventually, and it's kind of interesting. There's like certain keywords that when you say those at an ER, they automatically treat you differently. And so for me, it was more of like an education for a lot of my friends and family. So, okay, so what were the words? For me, it was more of I have a fever and that I had been in San Francisco. Um, and those two did, basically... Did that make them treat you better or worse? Or well, did they... It, or did they treat you like you had the COVID? Um, they treated me like I had COVID. Uh, so mm -hmm. they set me outside of the ER to make sure that I don't kind of become contagious and infect other people. And I waited out for a little bit. Um, and then they came in and they swabbed me and stuff like that. So they did kind of take me a lot seriously and they got, got me a test and got me an influenza test. So I think it's one of those things that it's, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of questions as to who to test, who not to test. And I think at that time there was a lot of a lot of people providing recommendations, and some of them are conflicting. Did you ever think you were going to die? The, so when I got the news that I had COVID, I think I had anxiety because there was so much yeah. going on. And I think that kind of accelerated my shortness of breath symptoms. And the second day, I kind of felt that, you know, something was wrong. I needed to go into the hospital. I didn't necessarily think I was going to die, but I've never felt this bad before. 
and I think I needed medical attention. So if it attention. got worse, you would have been in deep trouble. Did yeah. you have a problem with your breathing? I did. Um, I got a pulse ox meter, and just having one of those and knowing that your oxygen levels are normal, it's like a kind of confidence builder that you know you're not going downhill. Um, but it's what, what was it showing? The meter. Mine was always above ninety-five percent. So you it, you looked okay. Yeah. But you still felt a shortness of breath. Yeah. And so when did you get better? Um, probably around day 11, I had gotten better. That's a long time, isn't it? They yeah. last a long time. But you got better quickly. After the medication. Though. After the medication. It was, it was a long time. It was a long road. I think just letting people Amazing know. Amazing we can't get people to officially. You know, if somebody else endorsed that medication, it would be good. I think you would have a lot of endorsements if we get a lot of done in Detroit. Yeah. No, if, by the way, we have tremendous endorsements. But if it was somebody else other than President Trump that put it forward, if some other person put it forward that say, oh, let's go with it, you know, what do you have to lose? Yeah, They've been the taking it for 40 years for malaria, which, by the way, it's an unbelievable malaria pill, unbelievable lupus pill, unbelievable. In fact, the problem we had is people and with, with lupus. Lyme disease. Huh? And with Lyme disease. And with, I, I heard Lyme, Lyme disease. disease, too. Yes. No, it's, an, it's very powerful. Uh, but... Uh, it's incredible, because there's so many stories like yours. It's not just, I actually haven't heard a bad story you want to know the truth. You know, normally you'd hear some good ones, some bad ones, and you'd still give it a shot. I haven't heard a bad story. So it's, a, it's pretty amazing, actually, but th that's okay. The word is out. You know, the, the people get it. These people don't get it, the media, but the people get it. Anyway, well, that's a, that's a great story. So you're feeling good now? Yeah. You're going to go conquer the world as a young, handsome guy? <laughs> huh? How old are you? Uh, 34. That's great. You have a great life ahead of you. Thank Congratulations. You. Great Thank job. You. So, I've seen this man. My, uh, my story is unlike a lot of these people here. Uh, my wife is with me. We both uh, were in Colorado, came back to Arkansas. And on the following Monday, we had our mostly her flu-like symptoms. I felt a little bit bad, fatigued, but my symptoms were not bad. I was diagnosed because I took her to the doctor on Tuesday, and he, the doctor had enough intuition to look at me and could tell that Is something was doctor, wrong. Your, my, the doctor, my local you know. primary care, or her, hers, and I was in the, the room with her. You look like a very wealthy couple. You agree? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're loaded. I'm Dr. Deal Go. So I think the, the scary thing about me, because I, he tested me and I was positive. She also was positive, but I, did, I never had fever. I never had respiratory mm -hmm. issues. I did have the body aches, the chills. I felt overall bad, but in general, mm -hmm. I would have gotten up that Monday morning if she had not been sick. Even though I felt that I would have gone to work, right. I would have continued on my daily routine, and, right. and I'm fearful that maybe even what do you do? I'm working sales for a pharmaceutical company. Good. Good. So my fear is that people are not exhibiting symptoms, now, but they showed much worse, uh, had yes. a much harder time. Yeah, yes. she she was bad, but how but, bad? How bad did you get? Well. Not as bad as some of these, but definitely with that shortness of breath, which actually came later, which is another thing that's interesting. And that's scary, right? that's it is. And the first few days, I just had a really bad headache and fever, low fever, 100.4, enough to make you feel bad, and uh, the chills and the aches. And then that lasted about five, six days. And then I thought I was, I was telling people, I'm fine. You know, it was just kind of like a bad flu. It was not that big a deal. And you know, still in quarantine and everything, but it was the second week that then the respiratory really hit. Mm -hmm. So you, you almost felt you were better and then it came back. Oh yeah, I told people I'm, I'm 100%. I mean, not released, but felt felt strong enough and, and then was hit hard. I think it was like that next Wednesday. And then the shortness of breath and the, and I also got a pulse ox, which did make me feel better. Um, but just, it came in waves. I mean, I had three probably different waves and tested positive again after a month, and um, I am negative now. But you know, it's how long did it take all together? Um, over a month. We were we were over a month. We were positive on uh, the 
the 12th. The first symptoms were March the 9th. Yeah, the first symptoms were the 9th, and I didn't yeah. test, test negative until the five days ago. Yeah. That's incredible. How are you now? I'm great. Would you say 100%? Um, I would say 85. Uh, stay away from me, please. <laughs> <laughs> stay away. Keep her away. But the, yeah. the people that we were with in Colorado, every, every adult was positive with COVID-19. And when we returned, we visited friends. They, How do that, they all do? How do they all so far, everybody is fine. No one's gone into the hospital. And I think they're uh, working with us, doing the things we're doing. We're donating blood when necessary. I've done convalescent plasma as well. Um, it seems to be very important. A lot of people, when they recover, they want to donate blood because, you know, your blood is very good for this, right? Absolutely. According to every study we have, it's good. And the only question is, is it for one year or is it for a lifetime? Could be, you know, the measles and things where it's for a lifetime, they say. But it's going to be interesting. We just don't know because it hasn't been here long enough. It could be for a lifetime. Well, that's good. Um, so you donated blood? Uh, I actually did convalescent plasma. That's good. That's good. That's and fantastic. That will be very promising. Yeah. Congratulations. And you'll be 100% soon, I would imagine. Absolutely. I, th I think I'm almost scared to say 100% because I, I think I said that before and, and then <coughs> took it back. So I'm, I'm good. Well, that's a great story. Thank you very much, both. Thank that's you. great. It's great that it worked out so well. Has anybody, uh, you're okay. Uh, you are as good as. Do you feel you're as good as you were before this happened? Yes. So that's good? And I think you do, right? I think you're better. I just said... <laughs> she's a hot political property now. Okay. <laughs> uh, just, you do have, and I think just because of my underlying condition, I do have the tiredness that comes in. Um, the tiredness does kick up, and it would come out of nowhere, and I just kind of hit a, a, a... I just kind of plummet. I'm a little surprised they can't do something with your Lyme disease. The Lyme disease is really That's because really that's tough. federal. I need you. Yeah. No, I but I mean, I could even have you see the doctor over here because White, White House doctor. Ask the White House doctor to come. Seriously. Because Lyme disease can be very, very bad. Yeah, I don't have but a doctor also any can longer. Be, yeah, it also can be. Is it legal for me to allow her to use the White House doctor? You know what? If it's not, I will suffer the repercussions. I don't care. Well, there's, The Democrats there's, might not like that. You know? Well, there are a lot of people in Michigan, and I do have um, eight line bills that I am putting forward really for Lyme do disease it. because you cannot get treated in Michigan as a doctor sees fit for Lyme disease. People don't know about Lyme disease. It's a very bad, it's very horrible. bad thing. And it, so it, it is something I'm working but on. But it is something over a period of time you can treat generally. It also can kill you. Lyme disease, if yes. you have... If you have a certain type blood, you get Lyme disease, yes. it's over. I'm it's glad literally you know that. over. I'm I think type O, type O blood is mm -hmm. not too good. If you have type O blood, stay out of the woods, right? It's not even the woods. I got yeah. this at home at five years old. You got it at home. In Detroit. But usually it's from a deer tick, right? It is a deer so, tick. So where did the tick come from? Well, the tick does not discriminate. It will get on anything. So it comes somehow, right? Yes, squirrel, yeah. bug, bird, anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't discriminate. Well, it's like when I hit a ball into the rough in golf. <laughs> you know what I say? Enjoy yourself. I'm not going in there. <laughs> now, Lyme disease is pretty tough. It right? is. It's, it's a bad one. I'd like you to see our doctor before you leave, okay? Thank you. All right? I'm going to just say because sometimes they, they do have a very, very powerful antibiotic. And, you. Uh, you know, let's see if we can help you out, okay? Thank you. So this man, as you can possibly tell by look, was a great athlete and a great football player. And I, I didn't know Mark, but he said, uh, Tom Brady says hello to you. Tom Brady is a friend of mine and a great guy and just saw, signed a nice new big contract, right? Sure did. With a team that's supposed to have a lot of potential, Tampa Bay. I figured he picked a team. I'm sure he only picked a team with a lot of potential. And uh, it's going to be, how do you think Tom Brady's going to do? I think he'll do great. Um, Coach Arians is a guy that I, uh, I have worked with him before with the, the Cleveland Browns, right. and he's going to love BA. They'll work great together. So Mark spent 10 years in the NFL, and I guess you played with Tom Brady at Michigan, right? Yep, sure did. did. You notice? Did you? Could you see at Michigan because he was picked a little bit late, right? Could you see the greatness in Tom Brady at Michigan, or not necessarily? Absolutely not. <laughs> Is that true? No, look, he was a great college player, but to, I mean, look, they're saying he's the greatest of all time now. No, you so, can't, yeah, that's hard to say. But but you thought he uh, he was 
You thought he was really a great player in college, right? Of course. You know, so as a quarterback, the most important thing as being the quarterback of the United States is leadership. That's the most important thing. He's always had that and work ethic. So you had a guy, Drew Henson, right? Was, yeah. was first string, right? Good memory. See, I have a good memory. They're always sure. testing my memory. Nobody has a better memory than Trump. <laughs> Unless I don't want to remember certain things, which happens a lot, too. But you had a quarterback, Drew Henson, who was actually the starter. And he signed with the Yankees yeah. because he wanted to play baseball. The problem is he couldn't hit the curveball, right? Couldn't hit a major league curveball. But he was a great football player, but he got hurt. Tom Brady took over, and the team became much better, right? That's correct. That's been Tom Brady's thing, right? Both Drews. They had a Drew, right? They had a right. Drew in the, uh, in the Patriots. Yeah, a uh, crisis becomes opportunity. That, well, that's what happened, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what happened. Well, let's say hello to Tom when you see him, okay? He's, Absolutely. He's a great guy. So, you're a big, strong guy. Ten years in the NFL. What position did you play? I played tight end. Tight end. Okay, wow. That's, you're a big guy for tight ends. Very good. Well, I didn't say I was a fast tight end. I said I played tight end. So, were you a good uh, catcher? You could hold it pretty Yeah, good? I could catch the ball. Were you, a, deep, were you a, a blocker, more or less, or a receiver? I would tell you I was probably more of a blocker. More of a blocker. That's great. And how big are you? How, what, you're 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah, just under 6'6". Six, six. Right, right now, I'm about 252. I have the coronavirus diet. Uh, but I played at about, you know, 260, 265. That's right. You look fantastic. So tell us, so you're a big, powerful guy, and this little bug knocked the hell out of you, right? Yeah, well, Mr. President, if I may, from everybody at this table, I, I don't think they'll mind if I speak for them. We just want to applaud you and thank you both for your efforts the past three weeks. It's been outstanding, and we certainly appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you being here, Mark, and the American people are watching this, and I, I'm finding it fascinating, from uh, football players to state reps to all of the things that you people do, from uh, a rich couple that wants to go skiing, and they say, what the hell? You're going to sue the ski place? Don't bother. Uh, but, you know, no, it's so fascinating to see all different people, different types, different jobs, different everything, all different parts of the country. So tell us what happened, Mark. So, um, you know, I'm 44, like you mentioned, ex-athlete, still work out, you know, as much as I can. Not as hard as I used to, but still work out in shape. Um, it, essentially, I was uh, driving with my family in northern Michigan. I have three kids, Caden, Evan, and Case, and a wife, Michelle. Uh, stopped. The only thing I can think of that I did out of the ordinary, because none of them had, thank God, never had symptoms, still don't have symptoms, I quarantined for them is I touched a gasoline pump handle. I mean, that's literally the only thing that I can think of. I don't exactly know how, to be completely frank with you, how I got it, but. So that's the only thing, because you, you must go back and torture yourself with yeah, way to go figure it out. Lots of time. I mean, when it's all said and done, I've had roughly 30 days of quarantine. You know, that's 30 days without being able to kiss your kids and wife and, you know, do those things that you normally do. Well, why um, so long, though? Because right at, 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 basically at 12 days, I went into the hospital. I spent another five days in the hospital, and when I got out of the hospital, I asked the uh, physician, um, you know, can I, how long does the quarantine last? And I think the safe and easy answer was 14 days, right? right? Now, I, I'll tell you, I went to Crittenton Hospital, Crittenton Hospital in Rochester, Michigan. They were fantastic. The physicians, especially the nurses, like God bless the nurses and everything they do. My sister Diane is one of them. They were fantastic. They were absolutely fantastic. And, and for a place where, you know, the one thing I, I think we've all kind of touched upon is, look, when you're in the hospital, when you're in that position, quite honestly, it's lonely. I don't know if that sounds weak or what, but you're by yourself, right? And you, so and when those nurses really come in and see you and not allowed. Stuff. Not allowed, right? So when the nurses come in to check your vitals every three to four hours, it's like, all right, I got somebody to talk to, <laughs> right? So especially when you start to feel better. A very good guy, right? Gregarious, I guess they call him. He wants people. He wants people. That's good. Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, you know, I went through that process. Well, technically, just if I back up, if I may, just for a bit. So I got it and thought, there's no way. Okay, I should check my temperature. I don't feel right. But I thought to myself, there's no way. And in fact, I made the joke to my wife, Michelle, that I think I got coronavirus. I'm just totally kidding. Um, I took my temperature, it was like 102.6. So I did like any um, guy, or at least my buddies would do. I said, I'll go watch a movie and see if it kind of backs off. Well, it didn't. So I went through the uh, uh, drive through um, for screening, and basically I was sent home and said, well, go quarantine for 14 days. And 
So you, you know, you'll get through this, your chances are you probably have it. So the athlete in me, I will tell you this, the athlete in me is, that's the tough guy that just pushes, right? Grinding right. and just getting things done. It kind of worked against me here because truthfully, if I could have recognized, hey, stop trying to beat this thing when it's only getting worse, yeah. I probably would have went to the hospital sooner. I do not, and I was very aware of not overwhelming hospitals. But I, that, the, my point to you for bringing that up is I probably would have also got out of the hospital much quicker. Mm -hmm. So instead of a five day stay, it possibly would have been a two or three day stay, especially if they would have per prescribed, you know, HCQ. That would have been fantastic. So you took the uh, hydroxy. I did. And, and that made a big difference. I would say within 12 hours, I already saw improvement. And when I went into the hospital, I was, you, you know. Were, you were pretty bad for a while. Yeah, my pulse ox was 86. Um, you know, so I did not get put on a ventilator or something like that. Certainly, I was provided oxygen support, went on the z pack. So um, you had the, the zithromycin and, right. the, and the zinc too? Zinc. They had zinc as well, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's all through the IV drip, right? Yeah, so yeah, sure. you're just sitting there hanging out. Um, but that period of driving to uh, you know, the hospital, my wife's driving me and just seeing the, her concern. I mean, that's part of it, right? You see how much they're concerned. I, you know, I'd much rather me have it than her have it or the kids. So she never got it. She never got so it or the kids. With you next to you, you're driving together. She never got it. Yeah, I went in the back seat, maybe little she, style. Maybe though. she's tougher than you, Mark. Do you ever think? There's no doubt that she's tougher than me, right? <laughs> There's pretty, no doubt about it. That's pretty amazing. So the end result is uh, you think you're as good as new, right? Yeah, I'm telling you, probably about 95%. Uh, the only thing is my and lung capacity isn't quite where it was. Oh, really? Yeah, so if I went for so a jog, I'd have to puff a little to work in your lungs. It, Correct. It was there. Yes, absolutely. Because once it gets too far advanced, it's tough. That's yeah, I had that. some uh, um, uh, pneumonia things showing up. Or as they say, what is it? Brown glass appearance. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's where the z -Pack comes in, I think. You know, yeah. that's what... Uh, well, that's when I'm like, hey, prescribe whatever you got to prescribe. Let me get out of here. Why did you take the uh, hydroxy? Why did you do that? You saw it on television? Yeah, I asked them about it, and I, and I didn't know what it was called at the time. I just said the malaria drug. And they said, okay, um, and, and they ran through some different thoughts about it. And they had it. They had it. They had it. They sure did. Because we've stocked up the hospitals. We've got 29 million doses. Yeah. We've stocked up a lot of, I think, almost all of the hospitals. That's great. So you saw it somewhere, and you said, uh, you'll take anything. Right. Now. Absolutely. So actually, my business partner, Troy Evans, um, He's the one who sent me a text and said, hey, ask if you can get that. That's great. Yeah, so, you know, between him and, and, and Dr. Lance Benedict, so I run some small businesses, you know, having those and, and thanks to all of them as well, right? So, you know, 46 employees and all that. For, in, in order to do that, in order for me to do that and to be away, you have to have good people. And thank goodness I did. Well, I want to thank you. That's great. That's really a great story. Great. To see somebody like you just knocked not called by the invisible enemy, right? That was yeah. tougher than any football player you ever played, right? Uh, that's absolutely And you played correct. against some tough ones. I know you did. Yeah, I, there were some battles that weren't so good for me, but I always kept fighting. Yeah, you did a great job, great job. Anybody can be in the NFL for 10 years, that's a big tribute. That's not easy. You know how hard that is, right? Yeah, that's correct. Everybody always, every year, the new ones come along and you just stayed there. Ten years is a long time in the NFL. That's a great tribute to you as a fighter. Uh, I want to thank everybody. This has been incredible. Uh, I thought this would be a five-minute meeting, but I found each one of your stories so interesting. And hopefully the media can play some of these stories because they're, they're just, they're just, you know, we're going through something the likes of which I guess we've never seen. Maybe you go back to 1917, 1918. That was the big, that was the big plague. That was the big one. And uh, anywhere from, Mike, I guess, 75 to 100 million people died. Mm. Uh, it started here. It started in a certain location that I don't want to say because I love that location, so I'm not going to say it. But it started in this country and actually got brought to Europe, and Europe is where it did its, you know, uh, thousands of people died here, large numbers. But in Europe, tens of millions of people died. So we gave them no favor when whoever it is went over to Europe, right? No favor. But not since then have we, ha have we seen anything like this. And uh, we're winning our battle. We're winning our, our war. We're going to be doing, announcing some very good things in the near future. 
the American public's been great, you know, far greater than anybody would have thought. They had minimum numbers of 100,000, and I think we're going to beat that. 100,000 deaths, can you believe that? That was a minimum. And if we didn't practice what we practiced, and if they — if we did it a different way, because we had a maximum of 2.2 million people. Who knows even if that's right? But the way I look at it, if you cut it in half and cut it in half again, it's five or 600,000. That's what we lost in the Civil War. It's not acceptable. So we couldn't have done it, you know, to bull through, as we call it, to bull through it. Just like, treat it like a flu if we did that. So we made the right moves. Now we have to get our country open again. You all know that. But this was great. I thought, uh, talking to Mike, I said, come on, this will take five minutes. And uh, it's taken a lot longer than five minutes, and that's because I found that's it so great. interesting. That's great. And uh, really great. Mike, do you have something to say? I just, I just want to thank all of these courageous Americans. Thank you for being willing to be here and share your story. Uh, it is a, a tribute to your uh, resilience. It's a tribute to those healthcare workers, Mark, that you were talking about that were there for you. Um, and and I, I just, uh, President and I wanted to have a chance to see all of you and let the country hear your stories, because while we rightly as a nation uh, reflect on the more than 23,000 Americans who have succumbed to the coronavirus, um, as a tribute to our health care workers, um, we also do well to reflect on more than 44,000 Americans who have fully recovered, and you're among them. And so I, I want to thank you really for good. sharing your story. It truly gives hope uh, to families that are looking on who have a loved one who's struggling with coronavirus uh, today. And uh, I just want to promise you that uh, this president, uh, this vice president, and our entire White House Coronavirus Task Force are going to continue to, uh, to work every day to have more stories like yours across this nation until we, until we put the coronavirus uh, in the past um, and uh, and eventually someday have a vaccine that ends this uh, ends this once and for all. So. I think so, and I think we're making a lot of progress on vaccines. We're making a lot of pro progress on uh, maybe a cure, meaning a pill, because I think right now I'd like to have that more than the vaccine. The vaccine takes a little longer because they have to test it for a period of a year or more. And so it's uh, it's something we're going to come and come with. And, and I really think we're making Therapeutically, we're making tremendous, I think, tremendous progress. Tremendous progress. And we're going to see whether or not, Mark, whether or not what you did and whether or not what Karen did, whether or not that that's a big part of the answer. But I think it's uh, could be a part of the answer. Let's see. It's, you know, as one alternative. But we're going to have numerous alternatives. There's another one just came, you know, the Gilead drug, uh, Remdesivir, just came out. Oh, okay. And it didn't come out. It's, it's a highly sophisticated very, very sophisticated uh, treatment that seems to show good promise also. Well, I want to thank you all. Uh, Jeff, could I ask you a question? You're a great reporter and a nice man. Look at you with that mask. That's good. You look very good. You actually look much better, I think. But uh, what do I know? Uh, am I allowed uh, to take uh, to take Karen over to see the White House doctor, see if we can help her out a little bit with Lyme disease? Because Lyme disease is a problem. and. There are some answers. What do you think? Are you guys going to report me for being a horrible human being, for doing something illegal, that I did something illegal? Yes, we can. And they'll impeach me? Then you'll impeach me because I tried to help her out with her Lyme disease? You think, maybe? Because uh, I'd like to do that. What do you think? Should I do it? Uh, can't advise on that, sir, but yeah, I, okay. I certainly I hope that you would. never like to take chances, but I do. <laughs> so we'll take a chance on it, okay? Uh, thank you very much. We're going to have a news conference a little bit later. We're going to announce the uh, groups of people that are going to be uh, talking to us. Uh, we've made a lot of progress today. You see what's happening with our our bump, our big bump in the road. And our bu big bump is a lot less than a lot of people thought it would be because of the American people. They've been incredible. So I just want to thank everybody. We'll have a news conference in a little while. We're going to announce the people that we'll be talking to. And I'm going to be making a decision pretty quickly. And it's being done in conjunction with governors. We have tremendous support from governors. And uh, what I do is going to be done in conjunction with governors. But we'll be doing that in a little while, especially in terms of uh, uh, the people. We have a lot of great people in this country that know the different fields. And, you know, we have a lot of — a lot of skill is going to have to be used to get our country back to where it was. And we want to do it quickly, whether it's restaurants or whether it's uh, airplane business or whether it's a lot of other things. We have a lot of businesses, and we have the best people in every — every
profession, including medical and including political. I have a political group, too, a lot of great politicians. So, uh, well, some are great, some aren't so great, but I put them on anyway, you know. We want to have a, a sampling of everybody. So we have a lot of talent. I want to thank you all. You, you folks are fantastic. And just get better. Get that your job finished up, okay? Get, uh, you're going to be 100 percent. You look great. And uh, thank you very much, Karen. You and your husband are going to come with me, and I'm going to have you sent over to uh, the White House doctor. They have really great doctors. They just wait for me. You know, they say, they're there for me. But Mike, too, I think. Are they there for you, too? And if anything should happen, you know, it's very interesting. I was with somebody not so long ago, and he fainted. And he had a bad something happened to him. And it was at a certain location. And within, like, a minute and a half, there were seven doctors standing over. They had oxygen. I said, I've never seen anything like it. So they are prepared, and they are great, and we're going to take you over, and maybe we can find something for you, okay? That sounds great. We'll knock out two of them. Yeah, that's all right? great. We'll knock out two of them. <laughs> Thank you all very much. We'll see you in a little while. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Let's go, Paula. Are you we're concerned? Finished. You travel Paula, pretty far. Let's go. Paula, do any let's of you go. Have recently we're finished. Paula, let's go. We're done. Thank you, sir. Please. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Thank